Well, I made a little list of photos in the past. I uh, put a couple of sheets up on Facebook to show friends um, from Provence about 15 years ago. And we've just done one of them, which was that um, street scene, the street market, um, fruit stalls and so on, the figure. And I said, you know, choose the favourites you have from these lists and I'll, and I'll try and paint them. So a couple of people said that they wanted the two photographs of the boats doing. That, that was uh, these two here. So I'm going to do this one now. That one a bit later on. The fun. Somebody last night said they wanted that one. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing a few of them for fun, just to finish off um, my winter series here. Um, and then back to France and we'll be doing supply and air work. Now, drawing a boat is not easy, probably one of the hardest things of art and portraits to do. But when you're drawing a boat, find the centre line between the bow and the mm -hmm. spur. Get those shapes fairly equally around, although they're not a, a, a entirely the same. The shape this has subtle curves in the boat coming around the, uh, the thwarts here and from the bow. So they're not that easy to draw, but if you find that centre line between bow and stern to start with, it'll make life a bit easier for you, then you just need the perspective angles. Right, I'm going to use the flat brushes on this and uh, again work in nice big slabs of colour. So a little bit of water on the brush, a little roll of this one, put it straight in with paint, it's not a large canvas. And I want all these lovely different um, turquoises and blues we've got here, so we'll whack that straight in. You can just see my drawing underneath, just know where I'm going. And nice big brush marks, heavy paint. It looks very dark at first because the canvas is white, always does when you first start. I'm going to layer it on delicately, but fairly heavily. I want nice thick slabs of paint on this. And then we'll start to work some of these lovely light magentas and things into this very quickly. We're just going to use the photograph for the basis. As I say, these are my photos this time. It's nice to get back to my own again. And if I do use anybody else's, I change them so much that they wouldn't recognise them anyway. I'm going to use a basis for the work. I'm going to bring one colour into another, as in the broken colour technique as well here. Just let one colour blur over the next one. Do the yellow ochre into the colour now to give me a slightly greener tint coming with the yellow greener tint coming with the blue. In some cases I'm just going to put pure colour on and stroke it up. In other cases I'm going to push it in and scumble it in a bit. A purple I'm putting in, but actually it's quite a red purple. Could have add some blue to this to really bring these colours back a bit. Just the tip of the brush, that's the beauty of the, the film, but it's all the flats. We can use the edge of the brush as well as the flat of the brush. The feeling of these bands of colour coming across, which I'm going to use more blue on in a minute. Feeling a texture with the brushwork using the heavy body and dragging it out. I'm going to move towards some cobalt, stronger in colour down here. Again, fairly thick paint. I'm lashing onto the brush and pushing into here. Cobalt again. I don't think I'm a little touch of ultramarine here and there just to bring a bit, a bit deeper blue in, but I don't need much, I don't think texture with the canvas and the paint. I almost got a few new oil paint with it with only using it this thickly and it's drying quite quickly like this. Now mix some more of the turquoise with that and we'll just come back up into the horizon here and uh, start to put in these background mountains over the top of the hills here, just coming down into there, blending them together. It's a lovely Mediterranean feel we get in the light. Blue into there and white. Look for these colours and just sort of think, well, that's a little do. Really enjoy and look for the colours. There we go, that makes us a nice sky, doesn't it? Well, let's carry on down. Now, a bit lighter over some of the, the hills here, just over the 
horizon there. And I need to come down to the sea next here. Look a little bit thinner with my paint. Let's really enjoy these colours that we've got. Um, what I didn't do up there was I didn't touch the ultramarine. I'm just going to take a little bit of ultramarine and just go a wee bit stronger with that. Because I want to balance that against down here which I'm going to use this, I'm going to use the uh, <coughs> ultramarine and a wee touch of green now, down here, nice blue ultramarine, a wee touch of green into it to come all the way across here, a bit more water so that it flows off my brush, this lovely green ultramarine mix. There we are. Now we come down to the next green, which is a little bit more turquoise. So I'm going to add a bit more turquoise in there. And uh, I'll come down to that one. Bands of colours. Quite abstract. I mean, we, we are, even though we're painting figurative paintings, we're still painting abstract painting. We tend to forget that. It's still just shapes and colours. And just because we recognise it as something doesn't mean to say that we're um, totally bound by the figurative. So I can have to use some more pink in a minute. Start bringing some of that magenta pink from the sky into the water because that's where it is. Ultramarine, this um, cobalt and green right through the boats. I can still see the drawing underneath. It's going to allow me to paint the, the lights over the top and just have this glowing through and knowing where I am. As an under, as it plays, an underpainting. So I to paint some bright Mediterranean fishing boats. Eh? Going on down here for the. Uh... Well, while I'm at it, now this might seem a bit strange. While I'm at it, I'm going to put that same blue glaze all the way down here as well. I want um, a bit more cobalt into that. I want to be able to put my warm planks across this and let this just glow through. So let's really whack on some colour onto there. I'm going to put some ultramarine in there, some quite strong ultramarine too, so that the uh, warm planks will be across this. Let green come through into these bits as well. So that we've got reflected light. Even it's going to come through the the planks are going to go. And when you've got the, the colour on your brush, if you see it somewhere else, use it. So if I've got other greens going on elsewhere, I've got to get them in now. I'm going to go back to that very light magenta a bit and start to feel some of that into the water up here. A lot of vertical marks for uh, reflections going on, not just horizontals when you're painting water, especially reflections. Find your find your verticals as well as they as they reflect down through. In pure colour, pure colour going on. Bring out a lot more colour into this. We're just laying pinks over at the moment, these very pale magentas, just to feel the, the light of the boats where the drawing is. And from there we're going right down to some darks. I'm not going to use black, I'm going to use my Prussian blue and brown. Really push that paint in. Put these light next to darks, warm next to cools, rough next to smooths, and gradually all of these boats suddenly start to appear, don't they? Start to find these boats in the background, and that's going to indicate by lights and darks, one colour, one shape, like a jigsaw method, next to each other here. Quickly we can form a painting. I'm going to have to go down in brush sizes in a moment because I've got to start working in a bit more detail of shapes. Details and uh, still painting shapes. If I just put right shapes in right places, it should all work. Just when I do the highlights, things have really got to stand out. But I've got a lot of details to do yet as well on this. The colours. Let's get some of this orange red in for fun, shall we? We haven't got any orange red. Take some magenta at first, and we'll just 
Find the top of this cabin with the magenta first of all. Better. Should just be able to use the tip of the brush to drag it along. I should get a nice even line, not uh, uneven lines I've been getting. Pink happening. Cross. Really find these lovely colours and we start to use a heavy body now. So that I've got some basics on, I can start to use a heavy body a little bit thicker. <coughs> Let's have a look at uh, one of these planks while I'm at it then. Not what you might think, you just think, oh they're yellow, but no. Um, <clears throat> they've got uh, a magenta with them as well. Let's just see if we can find the right sort of colours to... That's a bit too light. That should be over here somewhere. So that one's be a bit darker. Let's take it down a bit and take some burnt sienna. And mix it with a little bit more. There we go, a little bit more um, magenta and we'll start to see if we can find some of these planks that are coming up here simply by dragging the brush through with these planks coming back. As they go back they're going to get slightly paler, slightly bluer, so we'll adjust the colours accordingly. And Here we can do them quite large strokes, come in with the smaller strokes later, let's just get this covered. And you see how we can paint planks very quickly without having to put them all in individually and, and then put the light and darks in between and mess about like that. Let's look at the um, much lighter turquoise going on, turquoise and yellow green. I'll take some of my turquoise, mix it with a bit of white, and add a touch of the yellow to it. Really got to find these colours now. Using the light turquoise I was just making. I'll put some cream to them later. just want to catch the highlights at the moment. I'm <clears throat> only using a small flat still here to get just to find the edges of things like here. It's a tin new and uh, just start using a finer brush soon to get some of these details in of uh, gaffs and um, masks and so on. But at the moment, let's just continue with our base colours and against that yellow is some green strangely enough so I put in some green down here and you see the difference it makes in the shadows here and we can go deeper with that I'm going to put a little bit of Prussian into that that deep green to really give it a shadow just here and there you'll see how that now that lovely cadmium red works against the cooler red to give us brightness of colour that we need. Let's bring a little bit of glaze of the ultramarine blue across there to get a feeling of the top of it. Now I've got to come down to a smaller brush to work out where these darker <coughs> lines are for the uh, gaff spoons mass and then again some of the highlights. Then I'm going to come back to these highlights. I haven't done the creams yet. There's a lot of lights I haven't done yet. I'm going to actually play with a rigger. Just see if I can get the effects I want with the with a rigger. Dragging my, my brush down. Let's see. Let's practice with it first to get it going. Make a blade out of it and let's have a look. We've got come right from here. Down to Get the mast in. Um, that one there to here. About yay high up. Here. Let's bring a vertical down there, straight away, all the way down to in there. Bantamba. Now then, 
and this 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 wonderful it comes all the way down to here um, so I've got to come from there to there let's keep my paper there for the angle and I'll try and follow it down to there so let's see what we can do I'm going to have to put some light on there in a moment so let's get those mixes going again We've got another mask then <coughs> here that comes from there straight down again. All the way down to there. There's no other way that, that to use a fine brush for something like this really. Um, you see me just dragging my hand down the canvas to get the to rest my hand to get a straighter line. Well, as long as I'm following the paper, I'm going to be about right. There we go. A little bit of a bend, but I can adjust that in a minute. And while I'm with the fine brush, let's just see how fine we can go, even with rigging. get too involved with details but just some. This is why it's called a rigger because we can do rigging like this. I don't like to get too figurative. I like to keep it fairly loose but I've got to play the rough against the smooth and the light against the dark which also means these fine lines as well. I'm going to go back to some lighter colours in a minute and get those in. Wherever else these very lights are as well. The paint's going to start drying on my brush and even on the palette, so I've got to keep wetting a bit of water to lighten it up here and there. And where it starts off here, we've got little bits of rope just making a knot there. And then this one. It comes down through here and makes a knot and then it actually carries on off here. So I've got to try and I might have to rest my hand on something now because I've got to bring it across to here in a nice curve. It's fairly tight across there actually. It'll do, it'll do there. And to get the texture of that rope again, I'm going to come back and just come across it with little strokes, little dots, to get the feeling of the twisted rope. Coming off down there. And suddenly the painting starts to come to life. That's what I was saying when we're painting with light. These last colours that I put on. <coughs> These little bits of colour that you don't always notice and then you suddenly realise, ah yes, that warmer yellow is actually quite important because it's bringing, it's playing against the, the sea and the cooler colours. We want these, the feeling of sunlight, we've got to start playing some beautiful lights against darks too here. It's amazing how a little bit of colour like that can make such a difference. Take some alizarin crimson down here, or purple. It's just now a matter of touching things up gradually. I'd just like to <coughs> get the pink on top of here a little bit stronger. Let's come back with a small flat and just take some of that magenta that I was using earlier with a touch of very bright pink. And I just want to really feel some of these lighter bits of sunlight coming over here that haven't quite... Purple against the red's a good idea actually, just a bit more of that purple and we'll just add it over here as well against these reds, yellows. There we go. Look about there and that, if we do a different one, another one a bit later maybe. Yeah. Decided whether we're going to do boat straight away again or not. There 
that's going to have to be it. A signature <coughs> will be difficult because they don't want to detract too much. Could go there, could go there. Um, There we are, the first of two little boat ones for you. On to the second one now, landscape. <laughs>